Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for the new screensavers is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. The new screensavers is brought to you by Casper, an online retailer of premium mattresses for a fraction of the price because everyone deserves a great night's sleep. Get $50 off any mattress purchased by visiting casper.com slash NSS and entering the promo code NSS. And by IT Pro TV. A good IT Pro is always learning, and IT Pro TV is the resource to keep your IT skills up to date with engaging and informative video tutorials. For a free seven day trial and 30% off the lifetime of your account, go to itpro.tv slash NSS and use the code NSS30. And by Braintree. If you're working on a mobile app and searching for a simple payment solution, check out Braintree. With one simple integration, you can offer your customers every way to pay, period. To learn more, and for your first $50,000 in transactions fee-free, go to BraintreePayments.com slash NSS. We Heart Pluto, Lightroom Tricks from Frederick Von Johnson, Viewfind puts TV on your glasses, and Makey Makey Go, live from the Twit Brick House in beautiful downtown Petaluma. It's the new Screensavers. <laughs> I'm Leo Laporte. Megan Maroney, that's me. And uh, you just got back from vacation, <laughs> but we're not really sure if you are back from vacation. I don't know. <laughs> I'm a little jet lagged, but I feel like I might be wearing later hosen. I think you are. Okay, yes. just yeah. checking. Yeah. These are, and yes, the shoes are official too, and the socks. I should pull up my socks because I, I think they're supposed to show off your shapely, Whoa. manly calves. That's good. Isn't it, it is a fan. I was very worried about what I was going to wear, and then I realized it wouldn't matter at all. Nobody's going to be looking no, at you. No, no, no. Uh, I'm glad, to, actually, thrilled to have you be doing the screensavers yeah. with me, the new screensavers, because you were a member of the old screensavers yes. for many years. Mm -hmm. When did you start? Ah, uh, 2000. Wow. I think yeah, I started slow. What, with what, a few you, what was your first job? Uh, I was the web producer. The web? Yes. Pro that meant content, web content. Content, yes. Hired by Tom Merritt. And uh, then I just moved my way up, climbed the ladder, kicking people down on the way down. Yeah, that was pretty much how it worked at the screensavers. <laughs> yeah. No matter what lowly job you started with, you would end up on the air. Yeah. Megan, uh, but not just you, but uh, Morgan Webb. Yes. Started as a researcher, became a star. Mm -hmm. Kevin uh, Rose. I've heard of him. Yeah. Kevin Rose like started. He was an intern, I think. Yeah, it was like an intern. Mm -hmm. Became a star. So mm -hmm. I think that was part of the fun of this. Uh, it was the, news, fun. Or the old yeah. screensavers. Yes. And part uh, of the fun of this too. Yeah, I never. You know, Patrick wore a kilt, but I don't think I ever wore later hosen on the old screensavers. I don't remember. You wore a lot of costumes, but um, <laughs> I, don't like costumes. I don't remember the later hosen. But anyway. I think yeah. You should wear that. No need to belabor this. No. I'm just, I'm, a, I'm an attractive, a good-looking man wearing shorts. <laughs> Leather shorts. Uh, we've got a great show for you. Coming up, you, I mean, one of the things I was watching with great interest, even as I'm floating down the Rhine, Pluto. New Horizons, pass by, fly by, amazing pictures of the most distant planet. Nine we, years to get there. It took them nine, nine years. years. Imagine what we were doing nine years ago. We, we have one of the space scientists who was in charge of that program is going to join us in just a little bit to talk about it and what we've learned already from those images mm -hmm. of uh, Pluto. You have a makey makey. Uh, yes, a makey makey. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what that is. Just you got to stick around if you want to see the makey makey. We got and a it makey makey. Me patting you on the head. <laughs> or punching you on the head, okay. depending on how this goes. Uh, the Makey Makey <laughs> Go is coming up, and we're going to talk to the founder and CEO. Also, if you liked Google Glass, you might want to stay tuned for a look at Viewfine, another Kickstarter project. It's mm -hmm. doing quite well. Uh, but let's start with the news of the week, and really, I think, the big story. There was Reddit. There was Windows Phone. There was... But the big story, everybody was ca captivated by this idea of we're seeing... 
Pluto. Joining us right now, uh, Kelsey Singer. She's a planetary scientist on the New Horizons team. She's there on <laughs> Skype. Hi, Kelsey. Hi. Hi. Oh, has the some of the buzz worn off? Or are you still high as a kite? To be honest, it's still pretty exciting. I mean, it's it's ebbing a little bit, um, but we are going to keep getting pictures back uh, because it takes a long time to send all of the data back. So um, we keep getting excited. Oh, so about you're going to get more pictures, e things. even though New yep, Horizons yep. has gone off now into the uh, somewhere. That's correct. <laughs> after the Kuiper Belt, uh, you're still getting pictures back. We've probably got like one fiftieth of the pictures oh. that we're going to get. So we have a whole bunch more coming back. Everybody though has seen that giant image of Pluto with mm -hmm. a what looked like almost like a heart-shaped formation down there yep. in the bottom. And you feel like, what a lonely, cold planet right on the edge of our own solar system. Non-planet. Well, yeah, or whatever <laughs> it is. I like planet. to call it. Dwarf planet. The dwarf planet. Still, planet. still a planet. <laughs> little baby planet. Uh, it was just so exciting to see that. What have, we, what have we learned so far? I mean, can you look at, as a geologist, a picture like that and get something? Actually, yes. So um, we, first of all, are extremely surprised. Um, we, well, we thought Pluto was going to be cool, um, but it has blown away our expectations because it has a really large diversity of different features. So those um, mountains that you happen to be flying over now, um, we are still struggling to figure out how they formed um, because they're quite high. And um, it's a unique feature to Pluto. We don't see mountains that look like that anywhere else. Um, and then there's also this plain big white plane that you're seeing here. Um, and it's got these funky polygon features. You can see these little pits um, that are in this image as well towards the lower part of the image. Uh, and we just really had no idea what Pluto was gonna look like. And we see all these extremely strange features that we don't see elsewhere. So it's gonna help us learn about how these processes occur. One of the things uh, it struck me is unlike the moon, I don't see craters all over it. Why not? You are correct. No, that's a very good observation. So um, that is because this is an extremely young surface. So there are craters on Pluto, um, but there's also large regions where there are no craters, and that's because it's been resurfaced by all this active geology. Um, and so that's what makes it so interesting. So is it younger than we previously thought? So we, we thought that there would be some young terrains, but there's been more activity than we thought there would be. Um, and so it is a surprise. It's a fun surprise. Tell us a little bit about the New Horizons spacecraft. Like, how big is it? I know no one was on it, obviously, but uh, <laughs> right. what, is, what did it look like? What? Yeah, so um, there, it's, it's uh, about the size of a baby grand piano. Oh. Um, it's actually small for a spacecraft. Yeah. And that's part of the reason they were able to get to Pluto as fast as they were. Believe it or not, nine and a half years is actually fast to get to Pluto. Um, and so they launched a very small spacecraft on a very big rocket. And that is how they were able to get there so fast. Um, and they did only one gravity assist, and that was at Jupiter. So they slingshot around Jupiter to get a little farther right. out. Yep, so that actually shaved three years off the flight. Mm. Wow. from that gravity Where's assist. Where's New Horizons going next? Because she's not done. Correct. So, yeah, so it was a plan to go to Pluto and the Kuiper Belt, which Pluto is part of. And so we now consider this kind of the third zone of our solar system. So everyone knows about the terrestrial planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. And then there's the giant planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. And now we consider the Kuiper Belt to be the third zone of the solar system, which is now the real outer solar system. Wow, wow. And so we're going to go to one other object, hopefully, as long as NASA approves an extended mission. So in my home, that I have three children, there's been a lot of excitement about really? Pluto, looking That's at these great. pictures, That's getting great. it. I mean, you know, they've all been interested in science, interested in what SpaceX is doing. Uh, have you noticed that there's a lot uh, of more interest of like people emailing you or contacting you, younger people getting more interested in space because of these pictures? Absolutely. And of course, that's one of our hopes and goals for doing space exploration is that people will get interested in it and get interested in careers and technology. It may not end up being space science, um, but it's that's one thing that makes me very happy to see. So neat. What's your background, Kelsey? Uh, my background is actually both in astronomy and geology um, and geophysics, and planetary is kind of right in the middle of those two. Yeah. So it's a good background for working on a, a planetary science mission. What an exciting job you have. 
I, I have to admit, it's been a good good week at work. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Kelsey, thank you so much for taking some time to share your enthusiasm, what we've learned about Pluto. I'm sure there's, if you said we've only seen a tiny fraction of what you're going to get. That's correct. There's a lot yep. more to learn and I'm sure a lot oh, more yes. to look at. That's great. More, more edges coming out and it's been my pleasure to talk to you. I hope you thank guys you. keep to keep following along with the Pluto fun. Kelsey Thanks. Singer, she's a planetary scientist on the New Horizons team. Thanks for talking to us, Kelsey. Bye. Safe travels out there in the Kuiper Belt. She didn't say a word about my outfit. <laughs> she probably just thought that's what. Yeah, that's what people wear. <laughs> All right, we're, we we're gonna take a little break. We got some help me coming up from Ted in Columbus, Ohio. This is gonna be a great show. Peter Rojas has a Gmail extension. Everybody's gonna want to use. Jason Calacanis has a tip. Patrick Norton has a tip, and we're gonna take a look at a couple of amazing Kickstarter projects. But first. It's time to help me! Help me, help me, baby. Oh, we got a good helper on the, on the, on the line right now from Columbus, Ohio. Ted is on the line. Hey, Ted. Well, hi there. Ted, you hi, know, everybody. You, I was told you're an IT professional. You don't need some guy in leather shorts to tell you what to do. <laughs> yes, and leader hosing. Very interesting. Uh, looks good. Looks good, though. Give us, oh, your, give us your question, Ted. Sure. Uh, well, I'm a big fan ever since it was a screensaver, so it's great to have a question on here. Nice. But um, basically, I'm a tech uh, advisor for a local small business, and their main computer, which does some credit cards and stuff like that, was greeted with a pop-up window that said, you have, you're infected with 19 viruses. Oh. Please call Microsoft immediately. Oh, oh Lord. At 1-800. And so the unknowing, gullible, I'd say, employee, as it were, um, called the number and was greeted by a unknown voice uh, and I don't even know if it said Microsoft and they told him uh, to do hit the Windows key and the R key which which he did and I don't know exactly how far it got but from there I just wanted to know is the local business in trouble um, can is the computer safe um, it was a newer install of Windows uh, 7 and they do run credit cards on that machine so uh, oh. So you got to you know, really worry about that, don't you? Yeah. What, you have uh, customer what information on there. So, exactly. well, <laughs> you know, the the director of the Office of Personnel Management never called us to ask for help, <laughs> but I'm glad not. you did. <laughs> uh, fortunately, we I have with me a person who has written an article, worked for Microsoft, and wrote articles on this very article subject. The part, well, not necessarily the, the part about the the you know office and credit cards, not that stuff, but just that te that tech support scam that we all get. Uh, you know, I'm calling from Microsoft or email. Call us at this 1-800 number. Or a pop-up on your window, yes, on your screen. Yes, it's the fake tech support. It's, you know, it's so scammy because it's just like you're scared. Oh, no, I did something, and now, and now I'm going to call this number. I'm going to do whatever I can to fix it. Uh, and so I just wanted to say Microsoft will never call you. So for those people, you know that. You're and they don't that, put a pop-up that no. says you have viruses. Call right. us. And don't ever call someone from a number that you see. Always go to the website yourself. Always right. look up the 800 number. And Yeah, uh, if you yeah, were so, worried, if you saw that, call, don't use the number on the screen. Call Microsoft. You know, look it up on, on the Internet and call yeah, that number. Right. And, say, Did, and they'll tell you immediately. Right. No, that's yeah, bogus. They're never going to call you. Now, let me tell you uh, the steps that these guys do. And by the way, there's some thinking that these guys are actually tech support people, real tech support people from India, from uh, uh, Canada, from areas where uh, China, where they do tech support during the day, at night, at night, their bosses say, now make a few more calls. And so they sound fairly credible when they're running through tech support. What they told your client to do was hit Windows R, that's the run command, as you know, mm -hmm. and they made them run, in most cases, the event viewer. Now, I don't know if you've ever looked at the event viewer, Ted. It's, it's a viewer of a log of all the events. Many of those events are errors, that's normal. You can do it right now on your own machine and you'll see there's lots of red X's. But what they'll tell you is, oh, do you see any red X's? Do you see any stoplights? Oh, no. Those are viruses. Can you read to me? Does it say? And they'll say some reasonable stuff, and you'll say, yes, it says that. And they'll go, oh, no. Well, we can fix it. Now, here's the scam. This is when the scam hits. You've, now you've got the guy, hook, line, and sinker. There's two things we could do. You can give me your credit card and $300, and I will fix your computer right now. But you have to give me access to your computer. 
Or if you want, you could bring your computer to the depot or send it back to Microsoft. So the guy's going to say, no, 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 I'll give you 300 bucks right now. Or they'll sell you fake antivirus software with subscriptions. Yeah. But the key is they've got now your credit card number and they've, and they've got your money. But the real issue is, did your customer, your client, your, the person you're advising, give them remote access to the computer? Do you know? That I am not sure of. And they didn't really know either. They didn't, I asked yeah, that's the that. problem. They don't, they're not experienced. So they could don't you know. use like the Windows safety scanner to scan your computer no, and tell if someone's... Here's the deal. Very simple. If they got, if you char they charge you 300 bucks for the call or they sold you fake software, cancel the credit card, you know, have get a new number and you're done. If they were able to get you to let them into the computer, you're screwed. Because at that point, they had full access to your computer. And your client isn't sophisticated enough to look at it and say, this is weird, he's right there, so I should look at you. <laughs> <laughs> your client isn't, somehow that camera got knocked out. Your client isn't sophisticated enough to have said, oh, uh, I can see what you're doing. Why are you looking in that database? Why are you installing that software? You don't know what happened. The client doesn't even know if he got a remote access. So you got to assume he did that he probably, if he had remote access, he had the capability of putting a keystroke logger on there. He had the capability of putting software, virus software on there. He could have gone into databases and download them. You don't know what happened. You should presume you were fully compromised at this point. So there's a couple of things you need to do. First of all, that computer needs to be taken off the internet immediately and wiped and reinstalled. Because there's, there's no way to fix what happened to that computer. Uh, yeah. you, could, you could use an antivirus and remove stuff. You could go get malware bytes and remove stuff. But there's no way that you know that everything was fixed, right? The only way right. to know everything was fixed is to reinstall from a known good source. In other words, your Windows install disk. You still have this issue yeah. that you don't know what he got. Right. I mean, you have to assume the worst. Like, we've seen what happened when people don't assume the worst, when they just think, oh, well, I'm sure Target thought, like, they didn't really get into, you know, the, the stuff or the Office of Personnel Management. I'm sure they thought that, too. Let's just assume the best. Yeah, remember when that first came out, they said, oh, they got a million and a half records. Oh, no, they got four million records. Oh, they got seven million records. I think it's, is it 19 million, the current number? And it's going up. And that's the problem. You don't know. If you can at all figure out by talking to this guy if they got remote access, if they got remote access, you now have, I, in my opinion, you have to notify everybody who is in that customer database and say, mm -hmm. we don't know, but we think we might have been compromised. You should, you should take action. You sh and you, you have a big responsibility. Is there a database of credit card numbers on that computer? It's not. It's supposed to be supposedly secured, like on another um, service that does it, essentially. Okay. So it's not like directly on that computer, but they use the computer to access that. All right, you're probably you know, all right. As long as there's not a database on there that he could download that would have customer information, then, then you may be a little bit off the hook. But you understand you have to be extremely proactive. We use example, the uh, LastPass, which was recently, uh, wasn't the, these guys handled it right. They noticed that somebody might have intruded. They didn't know what they'd done. They didn't know if they had da downloaded this database, but they assumed the worst and I think that's what you have to do that's your kind of responsibility so you need to kind of Ted figure out what could have happened is there a database whatever and assume the worst it sounds like you're good that there wasn't anything on that computer the guy could have downloaded you need to change passwords you need to change the login to that remote computer with that database you need to be very at this point you need to be very proactive the good news is yeah. most of the time those guys are just trying to get some quick money that's about it. Yeah. Um, but it could, you yeah. know, it could be as soon as you give somebody access to your computer, anything could be possible. It's very dangerous. And I think they knew his name, like when when he called. And actually, oh. about a week later, my my the same thing happened to my dad. It was kind of a gullible older computer user. Yeah. Um, but it's everywhere, so. Well, that's yeah. what you. I was gonna say. Tell the people in your life that you know that um, you know d Microsoft will never happen. call you. Um, you know, if you get a call like this, just hang up. Um, you know, don't ever give access to your computer to people. Same thing with email. Don't respond uh, with personal information. You know, all these things. You know, a lot of people that watch this show probably already know this, but it's a good idea to tell the people in your life that might not know this. Right. And now the best thing you can do for them, Ted, is to explain what happened, wipe the computer, make sure they all understand they shouldn't be doing this ever again. <laughs> yeah. And I would okay, worry great. about the log into that remote computer. Make, you might want to make sure that that's changed, right? 
All right. Yeah. Hey, okay, thanks, Ted. Thanks, everybody. Uh, thanks Peter Zane. So, uh, <laughs> Peter Zane. Sorry for giving you the bad news there. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> bye bye. Uh, are you? Uh, we're going to come back and come do a lot more. We've got to. We're going to have a lot of fun with the Makey Makey Go. Mm -hmm. And you're going to try something that's a replacement for Google Glass. Yes. Our very good friend, photographer Frederick Van Johnson, is here. He's going to show us some Lightroom tricks. Lots more to come. But right now, I want to tell you about my mattress. I missed my mattress. Mm. I missed it a lot. When we were on the trip, it was a nice bed. Savoy of London or something. It was not my Casper. You got to try a Casper mattress. Now, you may say to me, and I know you will, Leo, I do want to try the Casper mattress. Where can I go to lie in a Casper mattress for five minutes and get a sense of what it'll do for me? You can't. You can't because Casper mattresses are made in the USA and sold direct to you. They come. In fact, we have video. They come in this lovely little box. And you open up, there's my Casper mattress. You open it up, the mattress goes It's comfortable, it's both firm and soft, and here's the best part. You can try it. You don't try in a showroom, you try in your house. You have 100 nights, and you can return that mattress risk-free. It's easy, they come, they get it. No cost to you if it doesn't exactly suit you. So there's no risk to this. A 100-night trial, but I guarantee you, once you try it, you're going to love it. Look how it opens up. Now, by the way, this is memory foam and latex, so it gives you both, it, it's hard to describe, but you know, you want your hips to sink in, but you also want a firm, <laughs> look at that, whoo, baby, that is a comfortable mattress. I'm going to give you, they're very affordable, too. They start at 500 bucks for a twin, 950 for the king size. I got one for Henry uh, at school because he lives on the third floor. He didn't have any furniture. He, I, he wanted a queen size. I said, you can't get a mattress up the stairs on a third floor little walk-up. But the, no problem, the Casper mm -hmm. box, it was great. He loves it. You'll love it, too. $50 off just because you watch the show when you go to Casper, C-A-S-P-E-R, Casper.com slash N-S-S for new screensavers. Use N-S-S as the promo code to save 50 bucks on your new Casper mattress. And you have 100 days, 100 days to try it out. There's absolutely no risk, but I'm guaranteeing you it's the nicest, bestest mattress you've ever slept on. Just the right sink and bounce <laughs> casper.com slash nss all right now moving on yeah mr peter rojas is here he has a gmail extension i haven't used this yet but were you saying how much you like this uh i have not used it either somebody was telling me this is the greatest thing let's find out peter rojas Hi, I'm Peter Rojas, uh, at Peter Rojas on Twitter. And the one tip that I wanted to share was uh, a Gmail plugin called Boomerang, which I use to be able to manage my email flow. Uh, it, what it does is it lets you schedule when your outbound emails go out or have an email that's come into your inbox, sent out of your inbox, and then come back at a specified time. And uh, the reason that it's useful for me is that uh, sometimes you know how email begets email. And so if you write to somebody and then they write you back right away and then you write back right away, suddenly you're just stuck doing a bunch of email. And what Boomerang lets you do is slow down the metabolism of your email. And so if somebody writes you and you don't need to hear back from them right away, you can wait and send it the next day, uh, two days. So let's you write the email whenever you feel like and then have it sent uh, whenever is convenient for you. Uh, and then same thing, if emails come into your inbox and you feel a little overwhelmed with them, but they're not something you need to deal with right away, you can have it uh, boomeranged out and then come back when you're ready to take care of it. All right, thank you, Peter Rojas. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment we've all been waiting for, you're going to hit me in the head. I am. And I'm going to say, make music. <laughs> what is this? This is the Makey Makey, uh, and this is an amazing tool. If, if you've ever heard of Snap Circuits, that's like a thing that a lot of my kids love them. By the way, Leo um, Bobblehead's not included. This is this is the Makey Makey right here, right? Yes, that's the Makey Makey, yeah. and you attach it. This is even better than Snap Circuits because you use things in everyday life to make a circuit. And then banana clips to attach right. it in. Right, and, and it's interesting that you mentioned bananas because instead of bobbleheads, you could also use bananas. That oh. You attach them to bananas. You can use apples what anything. Did you, what did you and make? And so these are your bobbleheads, which yeah. do not come with the Makey Makey. No, no, this is but, Bobbleheads uh, not I included. have the Makey Makey Piano, which is at MakeyMakey.com. Okay, and then that's I, software. I created the circuit with my And this is connected finger. via USB. Yes, okay. USB to the computer. And uh, I have completed the circuit on my finger here. And now I can play. <laughs> is that important? Jay. Yes, the piano. Andrew. We're graduate students at MIT Media Lab. Just we by. dream that everyone is an inventor. Oh, so we created yeah. Makey. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's cool. <laughs> that's... And if I had stayed in piano lessons, this would sound even better, but... This may seem less than interesting. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
<laughs> but it's not. And Jay Silver, who's the founder of Makey Makey, is here to explain. Hello, Jay. Hello. Was that a dumb uh, demonstration of the capabilities of Makey Makey, or is this... I've always wanted to bring bobbleheads <laughs> and playing piano notes to the world, so I spent my whole life on it. That is, yes, yeah. Tell yeah some people go to Pluto, and this is what you do. Everybody's got I gotta... love this. You have lost your mind. I still sometimes have the mind of a 10-year-old. No, so this is cool. It's cool to so, me. What was the, what was your plan with Makey Makey? Because this was a very already done right Kickstarter. You successful, funded. We've got it. Instead of curing cancer, I decided to have bobblehead pianos. Yes. No, just just kidding. <laughs> of course. Yes. Uh, Makey Makey's out in the world. Two hundred thousand people wow. have them in their hands, wow. and the purpose of it is to take any everyday object, whether it's a bobblehead a banana, your kitty cat, a piece of ice, your grandma, or a plant or a flower, and be able to let it control any part of your computer using any software or any web page, and it should take no more than a minute, even if you have no experience. So I could hit grandma on the head oh, and play a piano? Yeah. You should kiss grandma on the head. That's <laughs> yeah. All right. Like grandma would complete the circuit. That's kind of cool, and it's done very simply, modularly, with the Makey Makey. Uh, is, this is kind of a breadboard. And uh, everything you need is in there. Where do we go to find out more about Makey Makey? Just Google Makey Makey or something. It's fine. <laughs> well, now, Jay, <laughs> you, Jay, joy, you joy say, Jay says he decided to do this instead of curing cancer. But what I will say is that this is teaching the next generation that might cure cancer. I mean, my oh, kids no, love is, things like this. this. Is it is exciting. amazing. And, it gets uh, into electronics. But, but and you didn't kids. stop at just Makey Makey. You have a new product. There's the new there, one. A new Kickstarter. Tell us about that. Yeah, so we have a bunch of products out um, from Dradio to Makey Makey, and the one you're talking about is Makey Makey Go. Makey Makey Go is a tiny version of Makey Makey that you can wear uh, on your neck, on your earring, on your keychain. You always have it with you. And the reason we did it that way is because we really want people to see the world they live in as a construction kit. Wow. That means you get to change the world. That means the world works the way you want it. If you don't like the way the world works, hook this up. You know, hook up your donut instead of your keyboard. <laughs> Wait a minute! If you don't like playing drums, hook up apples. If you don't like, you know, playing regular harps because they're too big and you don't like to be oh, that's like cool. an angel, then make that's one cool. out of some palm fronds. That's cool. The whole idea with Makey Makey is don't see the world as fixed <laughs> and don't see yourself as a consumer. You are a creator and the world is ready for change. And that's the thing I like most about the Make movement is stop being a consumer, start being a maker, start getting involved. And when you get kids excited, and I think this is a great way to get kids excited, yes. when you get kids excited about projects and they start to learn a little bit about it and then they also learn that they can do it. I think that's great. Right. I mean, we should say, I showed off the piano, but you, like you saw in the video, you can do anything. I mean, you can control your computer with this. With a donut? Yes. With a donut. Wow. If you don't eat it. <laughs> so the computer just thinks that the Makey Makey is a keyboard or a right. mouse. So imagine right. if you bring up, you know, like PowerPoint. Well, you know the arrow keys control the slides, but this thing thinks that you have arrow keys when you hook up bananas. So now bananas control your slides, or jumping on a trampoline controls your slides. Oh, that's cool. Or if you bring up Pac-Man, then you can draw a controller on a piece of paper using a pencil. So it's this kind of thing where any object can hook to any internet web page or any that computer really app. Neat. That is really neat. It is really quick. Cool, I mean, we've talked about, and we've been talking about computers for ages now, and we always talk about tools versus toys. And if you can have it be a toy for a kid, they're going to love it. You, you know, bet. and instead of... It should be fun. Yes. It should be fun. So, so uh, is Makey Makey Go on Kickstarter right now? Makey Makey Go Kickstarter just ended a few days ago, oh. but you can still pre-order it. Good. And, of course, you can order Makey Makey. And, you know, of course... Um, you can just like look at these videos and realize that you don't need to order anything. Just go change the world. Oh, that's so great. Jay, what's your background? I was trained as an electrical engineer, an internet technologist, and uh, then I went to, for a, finally for a PhD at MIT, studying how creative learning happens oh, neat. and how you make tools to catalyze it. That's so this is really your PhD work right here. That's right, yeah. This is, grows directly out of uh, about eight years of research. Wow. It's a great pleasure to meet you, Jay, and I'm thrilled. So if I go to J-O-Y-L-A-B-Z dot com, is that right? Sure, yeah. You could go to makeymakey.com if you okay. want to go direct to the, the meat of it and buy something. But, but joylab.com will show you the TED Talk on the theory. Right, and you do a lot of stuff. Uh, and and what, what's next? What do you think? Um, if you ever have noticed, video games are violent, addictive, and unhealthy. And yes. And changed all of that. Yay! <laughs> I've been waiting for somebody to do that. You know, the, the whole thing about a video game, it was easy to make 
a, a, a design software that detected if something hit a sprite. I mean, it was, and so it's all been gunplay ever since. Let's do something different and exciting and get kids excited about it and maybe get them away from the mayhem. I love the idea. Let's get people addicted to their own ideas and their own creation and working with other people. Jay, come back and tell us about it when you're ready, okay? You got it, guys. That's great. Jay Silver, CEO and founder of Joy Labs with a Z and makeymakey.com if you want to turn your grandma into a player piano. Now, Ian Thompson <laughs> with a tip. Ian? <laughs> Hello, I'm Ian Thompson, a reporter with The Register in San Francisco, and here's my tip for making life in airports a lot more pleasant. Now, I'm sure you've been in the situation where you're at an airport and you can't find a power outlet. There's never enough of them, and they're usually already taken up by frequent flyers. So, with a little bit of this, just make sure you carry one of these in your carry-on luggage, and then you can plug it into any power outlet. The person who's using it already can still use theirs, and it leaves some strips free for others, which is also a really good way of making friends in airports. <laughs> Thank you, Ian Thompson. Ian's a great guy on the register. Coming up in just a little bit, another great guy, one of my favorite photographers, Frederick Van Johnson, with some Lightroom tips. But first, let's talk about IT Pro TV, our great sponsor. Uh, we've been with them since they started, and it's kind of interesting because these were two guys, uh, Don and Tim, who uh, were IT trainers who watched this show, who watched the old tech TV, and said, you know, we could probably do IT training that way. And they created IT Pro TV a little more than a year ago. What a huge success it is. A network just like ours, just like Twit, but devoted exclusively to the world of information technology. So whether you're already in IT and you want to get better at it, or you want to jumpstart your career with the certificates you need, IT Pro TV is awesome. It supplements your traditional learning methods in a fun and engaging way. They've got a chat room, they've got live. In fact, they, they're, they're kind of, they lapped us. They've got two studios. They do 50 hours of, more than twice as much as we do, 50 hours of live programming every week. And, of course, after they do a show, it's now stored in their library. So you can go back and learn A+, CCNA, Security+, MCSA, CISSP, Network Security, Desktop Support. They've got that new ethical hacking uh, series, uh, which is amazing. They've got brand new iPhone iPad apps with the ability to resume play playback between devices. So you watch on one, you can go to the next one and pick it up where you left off. There's so much good about this. They've got a search function that lets you find every video covering a particular topic. They just added closed captioning, searchable transcripts, certificates of completion too. And you know, when you sign up for IT Pro TV, and I'll tell you, there's different ways you can pay for it. There's even a free tier. But when you sign up for a paid tier, you also get the measure up practice exams. That's worth 79 bucks. And their virtual machine sandbox lab environment. All you need is an HTML5 browser, and you can set up and run and configure a Windows server, Windows clients. You don't have to own any of it, just an HTML5 browser. It couldn't be more fun. Corporate and group pricing is also available. Clients include Harvard and MIT and Stanford. Go to itpro.tv slash NSS. Now, it's normally $57 a month, $570 for the entire year, but we've got a special deal. When you sign up using the offer code NSS30, new screensavers, right? NSS30, you'll get a free seven-day trial and 30% off for the lifetime of your account. Less than 40 bucks a month forever or $3.99 for the whole year. And as I said, they have a free tier. You sign up for the basic account. You can watch anything live right now. They're recording new courses on Microsoft Project and MCSA Server 2012. Starts at 9.30 Eastern every weekday. Uh, starting July 27th, they're going to be recording new CompTIA A+, and CompTIA C uh, CASP content. And you can watch that live just with the free tier. So that's a great way to see what they're doing, what they're up to itpro.tv slash NSS. Use the code NSS30 and you've got seven days free and 30% off and you will love it. A great way to get better at IT. I want to get better at Lightroom from this week in photography. Twip. Yes. Mr. Frederick, not Vaughn, Van Johnson. But you can call me Vaughn. I might call you Vaughn Johnson. <laughs> 
Hey, it's Today, great to see you. You can call me Frederick Von Johnson. <laughs> Where can we find TWIP? Thisweekinphoto.com. Easy. Easy. Go uh, and I love it, and I love your photos. Thank you. And we're here to talk a little bit. This is actually Germain, because I came back from Germany. Yes. Uh, I'm and, trying to keep a straight face I know, looking it's at not easy. this leather one. I like one. this look. This is my new look. So, uh, and with 1,400 photos. Yes. Which for, three, for two and a half weeks is not That's a lot. conservative. Yeah. That's really conservative. I was, I was thoughtful. And you were enjoying your vacation. Yeah. But now, what the hell do I do? Mm-hmm. You got some tips? I got some tips, but I want to show you, uh, I was talking to the person that you went on vacation with. My lovely wife, Lisa. Yes, congratulations on that, by the way. Thank you. Uh, but I want to show you some tips on retouching. <gasps> like, Love that. Like speed retouching, because I was told we only have like five, ten minutes to do this. So yeah. I now, you use tips. Lightroom. Is I it, do. Did you used to use Aperture when Aperture was I did. Still... I did. I love Aperture, and I wanted to use Aperture, but, you know, it just kind of, they stopped Lightroom's supporting it, it yeah. and then I went to work at Adobe, and then, you know. So oh, you work at Adobe I now? Did, no, I used to. You used to? I used to, okay. yeah, yeah. So, and now I'm on Lightroom, and Lightroom won. So. I love, you know what, I love Lightroom. Mm -hmm. This The Creative Cloud subscription, 10 bucks a month, you get Photoshop and Lightroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you're a serious, you know, like me, amateur, it's, but a serious yeah, photographer. Yeah, it's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. Even, you know, for me, I'm in the full cloud subscription because right. I'm dabbling in Illustrator, and I'm using Premiere and After Effects and all those. And you get the whole shebang. Right. So I'm diving in. I'm using Premiere now, you know, for a lot of things. And I use, uh, you know, Final Cut 2. But I have all of that software to use. So, so these are, is this a model shoot you did? This is a model shoot, yeah. I did a couple of weeks ago. And um, so this is straight out of the camera. So I want to show you what. By the way, that looks pretty good straight out of the camera. straight out of the camera, yeah. This was shot with the Panasonic Lumix GH4. Do you like the new, so th that's interesting. Mm -hmm. That's Is that a Micro, micro Four thirds? thirds? Yeah, and it's smaller than, you have a Sony, right? So yours Sony. is full frame. A7. This yeah. is, this is you know, smaller than that. Yeah. But, you know, look at the resolution. Looks this. great. It's totally, this is awesome. Looks great. So this is straight out of the camera, nothing done to it. It's a raw shot. So what would what would you do to this initially, Leo? Um, well, I'll tell you, the two things I do always to everything yeah. in Lightroom, I, I just notch the clarity up mm -hmm. a couple of bumps. Yeah. And, uh, but and sometimes you don't want to do that on models. Maybe you don't want to do that. Yeah, you want to go the face. other direction. <laughs> you want to soften it, you not crisp soften. it up. Negative clarity is what you want to do. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what I would do on this so one. So you want to take the defects out? I mean, you want to Yeah, you want to smooth it a little bit. Okay. It's, it's not exactly perfect, but yeah. first of all, I would crop it because you want, you know, you that, want a good that's right. crop on it. Let's focus on her. Yeah, so, so I'll hit the R key and then I'll go in and kind of drag in what I want now, my crop to be. Be. Lisa and I have a debate because I always crop it in the uh, original aspect ratio. Mm -hmm. I want it to look like a normal photo. Yeah, but what's a normal photo? Well, that she says, "What well, are you crazy? Unlock that That's and crop gone. it as you want it." Yeah, unless you're going to Instagram, you're going one to one. The the old days of cropping to five by seven, eight by ten are for frames. You're okay. not framing anything. Normally. You've just you've just released me. All you right, you can do whatever okay. you want. So there is a little lock. You can unlock that. Unlock that, and then you can crop it any way you want. Free yourself com from constraints. Lisa, kind of you like win on that one. Your leader hose in here. Yes. <laughs> no, this is believe me, trust me. Plenty of constraints. You are constrained. I am highly constrained. So, All right, so let's crop this. So I cropped it. Right. So I took some off the sides, okay. and now we're we're focusing on her clearly. Now the next thing I would do. Now this is a quick. You know, a quick retouch. I'm not going to spend all day on this, but what I would do is I'd want her eyes to pop and her teeth to pop. Okay. She's great on both of those, but I'll do it anyway. So in Lightroom, what you'd want to do is zoom in, and I'll go over here to the right, and I'm going to pick my the magic retouching tool. You got I love it. that that baby. magic tool. But here under this effect, see this little pull down? Yeah. I can pull that down, and underneath it, I've got teeth whitening in no. there. No. Yeah, that's all in there. No, this yep. is the new Adobe Lightroom. This has been in there. No. This has been in there. Yeah, you okay. just never went to Never it. saw it. <laughs> so we're going to do our teeth first. So okay. I'll click teeth whitening. And the other thing I want to click is this auto mask. And that will constrain the selection to no. just... No, because look just how big your brush is. That's going to whiten her lips. It, no, but watch when I click. <gasps> it's just doing the How teeth. does it know? It's magic. Wow, that's great. Look at that. And you if I what? roll over that and hold my cursor there... It'll show me where what it's you applying did. the adjustment. Yeah. yeah. That is a simple thing that does make a huge difference. It and does. It's unconscious. It's Nobody says, things. oh, her teeth are so white. Right. But they notice. And same thing for whites of the eyes. I'll use that same thing because all it's doing is decreasing saturation a little bit. Uh -huh. I'll go and do the whites of the eyes as do well. Do you use the teeth whitening uh, setting as well? On the eyes okay. too, yeah. The computer does White is know. white. Okay. White is white, yeah. So boom. Look at I've, that. I've done it and now we've... Oh, that pops. We'll click out of that and look so at that. So much better. So the next thing I do is... And yet it's subtle. It doesn't look freaky. It doesn't, yeah. And no. that's the thing with retouching. You don't want... if It's like 
like, you know, you don't want to leave tracks yeah. that you've been there. If, yeah. if people know that you've retouched it, you no. failed. You right. want people thinking about the photo, not about what you did exactly. to the photo. Yeah, you're like, yeah. wow, what a great retouching job. You failed. No, that's <laughs> bad. Not good. <laughs> yeah, so the next thing I would do, I like things a little bit more saturated than normal life, especially her with this pink hair. Yes, right? I agree. So I'll drag saturation up just yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Then you can see that's popping now, right? And I then, often do clarity, vibrance, and saturation are all in the same area. Exactly, And yeah. those three I often mess with, like now, right out of the box. What you would do, like you were mentioning clarity, look right? Look at that. So we'll do, like, what so you would do is negative it, clarity. Look at, look yeah, at what's happening when I do Yeah, softens her negative. skin. It's better. See? And she's, she, now when she sees this, she's going to be like, wow, that's great. Yeah. But what I would do, I try to stay away from clarity because there's a plug that clarity? I use. What is you know? You know, ask, ask the scientist. It's like a Adobe. sharpening Yeah, thing. it's like negative yeah. sharpening that does right. some kind of sub-pixel magic right. in there. Yeah. Um, but what there's a plug-in that I use in Photoshop called uh, Portraiture. A lot of photographers have heard of it. So it's not that expensive. It might be 99 or 100 bucks. But I'll go and I'll say edit in Photoshop. It'll take this image. It'll throw it into Photoshop if we're lucky. And then from within Photoshop, I can apply this retouching to it. So it's going to open up for us real quick. And what this plugin is going to do, it's going to allow me to do some like high-end retouching to it. By the way, when you use a plugin in Lightroom, it takes all the adjustments you've already made yep. and brings them in. So yep. the teeth are still white, the They're eyes still are white. still white. Yep, yeah. we're all good. So it's where I stopped and now I'm, I'm continuing in here. So I'll go to ImageNomic, who's the company that makes this, Portraiture. And before I continue, so a lot of photographers will say you're not supposed to use plugins like this. And I disagree. I say... I use them all the time. This is software, right? right. This is letting you... It's giving you the ability to do things you couldn't do before. Well, at the very least, I like black and white. Yeah. I will often make a picture monochrome. Mm -hmm. That's a plugin. It's a plugin. Yeah. And, and, you know, and when you're making decisions, when you're taking photos, in the old days, we're picking film. That's kind of altering things, Same right? You're right. picking focal lengths and cameras. Yeah. People and, pick film like Ilford for face. Exactly. Uh, you know, Fuji film. Some people say it has the best. Yep. So that's yeah, the same. Vilvia, thing. Yeah, yeah. The stuff. fact that we can do it is great. Yeah, and, and it's and computers. It, you know, the computer. uh, that debate is over. So, so it's check like this the out. debate about constraining five by seven. Just exactly. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. So look, so at, look this. at that. So this is when I click on this, it's going to show you the before. See that? That's the before, and that's after the plugin did its job. See that? It's very subtle. It's very subtle, and that's the thing. You don't want it to look like you went the in there point. and did something. And by the way, this is why you should never feel bad when you look at a magazine and say, I'm not that pretty. Because they're not that they. pretty either. <laughs> you just need to bring this Photoshop you plugin with you everywhere. You're a good photographer, you go. right? Yeah. yeah. But you know what? This plugin is actually cool. They uh, they came out with a video version of it, too. Oh, that's So neat. you could actually run it on the screensavers. People don't know. Yeah, maybe it's about time. <laughs> people don't know that film is almost always, in movies, almost always, they process the biggest stars to make them look more gorgeous. Yeah. They do exactly this kind of thing. That's right. And you would never know. It's, you would never I mean, know. she just looks like she's well, had she's, an unusually good awesome, night's sleep. But she's got good genetics to begin well, with. Well, obviously. You know, you're, starting with but, a, you're starting with a great picture. Yeah. So then when you're done, you just click OK. and Look at that. It brings it in. Look you're at good, that. You know? That's nice. So it's going to add the filter, and then boom, we have that. We save it. And then we'll go back into Lightroom, and it'll bring oh, those yeah, adjustments yeah, back in in yeah. a second. You know? and, and so you can it. see before and after, uh, mm -hmm. and it really, it's subtle, but it does make a big difference. Yep. That's nice. And see, there it is. And the last thing I normally do on photos like this, depending, is add a little bit of a vignette to draw attention into yeah. the subject. Yep. So I'll go in down to highlight or post-crop vignetting and drag it over just okay, a little bit. Okay, I got a question for you. Yeah? I was doing that, and the vignette was white. I want a black vignette. How yeah. do you change the color of the vignette? Go the other direction. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Slide it that drag way. Drag left. Instead of right, it's easy. <laughs> I have this big white vignette. I thought, I don't want See, that. See, like, I'm dragging right. I See, thought, that's right. Oh, that's what I got. And that's left. Oh, much better. Just like that. Doi. See, now you're drawing, but white vignettes are fine too, right? It's you know still what's drawing cool attention in. about Lightroom? It's non destructive. Any change right. you make, you can go back, go back. They give you a history. Yep. None of this has changed the original, and that's the nope. beauty of this. Nope, you I can, can go really back and create it. copies yeah. of this and go on and on and on. Love but it. that's it. See, in like 10 minutes or so, that we're pops. Done. And now we can save this off. We can put it online. We're, we're in a, in a non-traditional crop, so you're not going to print this. Right. But you could. I could still crop it. I can make a copy right. and crop it to 5x7, 8x10, 16x20, right. whatever I want, and go to town with it. Are there times where you'll spend an hour, three hours on a, on a photo? Not retouching. What I try to do, uh, that's a great question, because I try to get the shot right in camera. You see, we started with really good source yes, material. of course. So it required very little heavy right. hitting. If you're starting with something that needs a lot of work, it's going to take you an hour or so. If you get it right and take the time to light it right, 
and then when you get into the computer, you're going to spend less time in there. So and that's ten what minutes I do. should be enough. If ten you've done minutes everything should right. be enough, unless you're doing something crazy like compositing or or cinemagraphs or something like that. Then you're going to take time. But for something like this, you want to get in and out and then get on to the next image. Frederick Van Johnson, this week in Photo.com. That's me. Twip is awesome. Thank you. And Thank you. photography is the best darn hobby. I mean, it's so much fun. It's and so cheap, right? So cheap. Nowadays, the the well, it's not cheap. No. Can be more expensive. No. Depends. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but I it now it's never been a better time for photography. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's just it's amazing. It, it, it's it's a great time for learning it and playing with it and doing it. Thank you, Frederick. You're welcome. Appreciate it. It's always good Thanks to see you. Thanks for having me on. Come back real soon. I've been a fan of this show forever, so I'm excited it's to be fun, on isn't the screensavers. The new screensavers. The new screensavers. Yes. Thank you. It's not creepy like Google Glass, but it is kind of similar. We're going to talk about Viewfine, another great Kickstarter project. We'll meet the folks behind it. But first, Jason Calacanis Jason. with a favorite site. Hey, everybody. It's Jason Calacanis again. I'm an angel investor, as you know. I also write sometimes on my blog, calacanis.com, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, I want to tell you about a company I just invested in. It's called Lead IQ Lead Capture. What it is, Lead IQ Lead Capture. Very simple. You just go to uh, leadiq.io. You install a Chrome plugin. Then anytime you're on a LinkedIn page, if you hit capture, it will take the first name and last name and company name of the person and then look it up on Twitter, Facebook, Crunchbase, AngelList, all these different places that has information. And then they'll put the contact information in a row of a Google sheet, like an Excel spreadsheet, but on Google. And so you can go through and let's say you were looking for you know, a new um, designer. You can search for designers in San Francisco and then just capture, 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 capture those leads, put them into an Excel spreadsheet, which is what you would do anyway, but you don't have to keep typing it in and cutting and pasting, which is really annoying, right, when you have to do that. Plus, it looks up their Twitter handle, looks up their Facebook, and they get more information on the person. Again, all that research you would have done normally, lead IQ and this little lead capture toolbar works. Then this other secret is, they test and look for emails, and in about 50, 60% of the time, they can find the actual email of the person. Uh, the product is free, I think, if you use it lightly, and then I think they make you pay if you use it for over 50 or so people. It's an amazing product. It's really saved me a lot of time in capturing leads, and uh, I give it my highest recommendation, which is I saw this product, and I said i got to invest in it. So I hope that helps. Mr. Jason Calacatus. <laughs> I always feel like I'm watching a mini Shark Tank when you're watching him. You yeah. Know, this is one of my investments. <laughs> he is great. He has got some really great tips. He has, oh, he's like great. He's, he is a character, and I adore him. And I want to thank him for filling in for me uh, last week on uh, Twit. He did Twit mm -hmm. without me. Yes. Mike Elgin did a great job, too. Uh, who else did Twit? While Becky Worley. Becky Worley. Yes. Uh, I want to thank our great hosts on this show, too. Uh, Patrick Norton did one, right? Uh Mike. Father Robert. Mm -hmm. Mike. Oh, Mike, did Mike? No, Robert Heron. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I'm back. Sorry. Mm -hmm. And we've got another help me from... T Hello. How you doing? Hello. 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 <laughs> help me. It's Sean from Toronto. Hi, Sean. How you doing? I'm warm. It's about 31 degrees down here. Oh, that We're sounds like it's just below freezing. <laughs> well... Celsius. Celsius. What is 31 well. Celsius? No, wait a minute. No, don't tell me. I'm going to add 32 and then multiply it by nine fifths. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> I'm going to type that into Google. <laughs> in a converter. Who is that just behind my, you? Is that your dad? That just. Dad. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> Dad. Place, yeah, my computer was left here, so I figured I might as well oh, stick fine. around. We, and you, you don't have to clean up your house. And now I've got to spend money on uh, Lightroom. I've been a, an, ad, uh, an advocate for. Isn't uh, that aperture. cool? Well, and, but the, but and nothing wrong with Aperture, but Apple just stopped making it. So what are you going to do, right? right on. You got to find do. the next thing. Mm -hmm. What can we do for you, Sean? My question is about uh, Apple Music. I, I've started using it since the uh, free trial started, and it's interesting. I look up all the music I've owned or listened to before and never really get anything new. My question is really about Apple Match. Uh, in the keynote, Apple was saying that they're great companion apps or services. I wondered what you thought, because I'm going to be paying for both if I, uh, if I keep it going. You know, this has baffled me. 
Because I read through over and over after WWDC all the information about Apple Music, and I couldn't quite figure this out either. Fortunately, you know. Yes, so we've been talking about this on iOS today a, bu a bunch right. since, uh, you know, you've been gone. So Jason I Snell so. filled in. Thank you, yes, Jason. Uh, he did not. Renee Ritchie filled in, and Georgia Dow filled in. Jason Snell filled in on, on your break. last I'm vacation. I'm very confused. And for Mac Break Weekly. Georgia yes. is, is great. I love and her. And Renee, yes. Yeah, and, and Renee so, Ritchie, of course, yes. knows all. Yeah, so, so people have been really confused about the difference between iTunes Match and Apple Music music. Uh, it, it's unnecessarily confusing. People were, were really confused in the beginning, um, and now they're understanding it a little bit. So iTunes Match is a music locker service, whereas Apple Music is a music streaming service. Right. So there might be people that want both. It sounds like Sean wants both, um, which Apple makes sense. Apple says they're complementary. Yes, and they, they are. I mean, so... So 25 bucks a month with iTunes Match. No, $25 a year. I'm sorry, a year that's, for that's iTunes Match. Month. And that means that anything, uh, not only anything I've ever bought from iTunes, but anything that I've uploaded from my computer. Anything you ripped from a CD or gotten from an LP or any of your music. Is all stored is in all the cloud. all in the cloud. And I can re-download it. In fact, they'll convert it to 256 kilobit AAC right. without any copy protection. Yes. So it's a nice way to remove it from old stuff that has copy protection. All right, so that makes sense. So that's a locker storing right. The things I've bought, the things I own. Right. So then if you're using Apple Music, the streaming service, if it has uh, that music that you have stored and they have a better version of it or a different version, they're going to play that version that they have in Apple Music, that they okay. would play for someone else who didn't own that music. But if you, like me, Sean, do not have the entire collection of Taylor <laughs> Swift albums in your collection, you could use Apple Music to listen to those. Right. Because you're paying that $10 a month that gives you access to all 30 million songs. Right. So it sounds like in some cases you want both. Right. I, this is the way I see it. If you're someone that never got around to uploading any of your music, um, you didn't have a bunch of CDs, or you've just changed the music that you've listened to, I think Apple Music is fine. You know, just you can stream you don't need music, more. Especially if you don't listen to obscure music. Well, and like, I have to point out, if you bought anything on iTunes... Anything on iTunes, that's already going to be on Apple Music, right? right? Yeah. So you don't, and it's going to be the same quality. Well, it's, not no? necessarily. You know, some people, Neil Young, I don't know if you missed ah. this news, but he is pulling, he says he's pulling his music from all streaming services. Right. I personally, still rocking in the free world, still can get it well, on my Apple Neil Music. Well, Neil Young is from Toronto, yeah. or that area. He's from so Canada. So if you could just talk to him and say, Ask just Neil. Fine. Give him a ring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, but that's a good point. If yeah. you bought something on iTunes and it has been subsequently pulled from iTunes, this would allow you to put it up there. I use, as an example, the Beatles. I love the Beatles. Mm -hmm. I have the full Beatles collection. Now, iTunes happens to have Beatles music on it, but it's the only service that does. So when I listen to other services, it's nice that I have my own collection of the Beatles to add to that. Right. And if you're a fan of Prince also, Same I know thing. you are. He's I am. pulled I love his music. Yeah. So, yeah. And the other thing that people were saying when it first came out was that Apple was adding DRM, adding digital rights management to your personal music. That was Is in that the news. True? No, it's not no. true. They're playing music that might have have DRM in it because it's just easier for them to play right. that music instead of you know getting your version of it. This is, in my opinion, the really the main differentiator between say Apple Music and Spotify. Both Apple Music and Spotify have roughly the same set of streaming music. The only difference is that Apple Music will store your own music right. there as well and stream your own music as well. So if you make a playlist or you're listening to radio, sometimes it'll use your own music. And right. if you have music that was never on iTunes, never available from Apple Music, you'll still hear it. And right. I think that's nice. Yes, and if but you're Spotify... A there is, a, there is a total number of songs you can upload to match, right? I think it's 25,000, as I yeah, remember. And I think I, I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> <I think laughs> That's an awful lot. Are okay. But you might just want match and still use Spotify. Like, that might be what you use instead. You don't have to use Apple right. Music. If you, like, if you love Spotify and you don't mind the ads, or if you prefer the service and you like paying nine ninety nine to them instead of nine ninety nine to Apple, right. you can use iTunes Match and Spotify. And so there are other services music. that let you, that have the music locker capability. Google's all access does exactly the same thing. You can upload all your mm -hmm. music and then it's there. Amazon, uh, Amazon does, although Amazon doesn't have the huge variety of streaming music right. that Spotify and Google and Apple have. Right. So, there, you know, it, it, there are some slight differences. Mm -hmm. I suspect Apple Music will do fine because it's on everybody's device. It's kind of a no-brainer. Uh, they've got a great deal for the family, $15 uh, for uh, up to mm -hmm. six people. With different so accounts. It's, so I, I think that that's probably going to do pretty well just because it's Apple, right? Right. Right. The only thing is the app has really changed. Like, it's I not like Beats. My iPhone 
is hard to navigate now. I'm yeah. having a difficult yeah. time figuring out what's what. But my wife uh, has told me that Apple Music is great for one thing. What's She's that? now streaming the uh, Disney Princess music 24-7 in my house. <laughs> That's your worst nightmare. <laughs> the Frozen Channel. Oh, my God. Hey, by the, you hear that, I think, a little bit. Mm. By the way, the chat room's telling me that it's now 100,000 songs. Oh, yeah, I that is really that. good. That's yeah. You're never going to run up against right. 100,000 yeah. song limit. Yeah. And for 25 so, bucks, I might as well just keep both. Right. A year. Yeah. I used it. You know what I used that match for, which which was great, was to convert everything, the low sample rate, you know, 128 kilobit MP3s that I'd made years ago, the DRM'd music that I'd bought from iTunes, convert that all to 256 kilobit AAC. Even if you just pay for it once, delete everything and, you know, upload right. it, delete it, download it again, that's worth it. But I think if you have a lot of your own music, uh, you know, music that you made or music that you that's rare that Apple doesn't have, it's worth yeah. having the 25 bucks a year. Yeah, but you should make sure that you also keep the other backup. Right. Like that was, you know, you can't, you, what do you, you don't think? have another copy. So yet. besides hard to use, and I've heard that a lot, what do you think of Apple Music? Is uh, I go ahead, Sean. What do you think? <laughs> uh, so far, it's interesting. I, like I said, I'm, I'm looking up all the music I used to listen to and probably have CDs somewhere, but haven't right. bothered uh, to rip. Uh, but I, I don't know the new music. I'm not a big music guy. I listen to the 680 News a lot, you know, as I'm driving around. Oh, yeah. Uh, John Don my old buddy John Donaby used to work there for years. Love well, that. And yeah. that's a problem. So I, I haven't gotten into uh, these playlists and I really yeah. looked into all the features that, that are available. Uh, I'm sure as we go and when I start paying, you know, after the three month is expired, that's when I'll start using all the features. Now that yeah. it's free, I have Might as well take percent. advantage of the three months, right? And see, what, should, see well, what it is Everyone like. should. Yeah. yeah. And I, I hear they're also paying their artists now. Yes, I heard that, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, somebody made a complaint. Yeah. Hey, somebody thanks paid. so much. Great to talk to you, Sean. Thanks for writing, Thanks very much. Great being on right, the show. Take, take care. care. Sean from Toronto and another great help me. Would you like to be on the show? We would like to have you on the show. Here's how. Okay. What? Need tech help? The new screensavers are here with answers. Email your tech questions to newscreensavers at twit.tv. Thank you, Jim Cutler. Jim's going to be one of the uh, hosts uh, next month, I think, on the show. Jim's going to be here in studio. Huh? Yeah, next week. Next week? Oh, the liquid voiced. Yeah, I love him. Yeah. So what do you think of Apple Music? I like love it? it. I mean, everything that we talked about, I love. Also, the way I can control it with Siri is what I love. Like, just, you know. That say, is a differentiator, you know, yes, isn't it? Yes, like, shuffle all my music, play right. Neil Young, um, like that song. Like, in the car, it is amazing. Like, you can listen to basically anything I want to listen right. to, I can listen to. But Spotify was like that for me. It was like, I don't need satellite radio anymore because I've got Spotify. But you can control it with Siri. Like, you can control it. That's, you know, just it. say, yeah. like, I want to listen to music from, you know, March 2000. Too, or, and Siri you know, will do it. Yeah, Mine, yes. I she. I mean, she does everything. Yeah. Or it does everything. I. The other thing that's missing for me, it doesn't support the Amazon Echo yet. Yeah. It doesn't support my Sonos speakers yet, and I use Sonos with Spotify all the time. Yeah. Well, you I can pair your phone. That. I pair my phone to my Amazon Echo, so I play. Oh, so you can do it that yeah, way. Yeah. You just okay. you have playing whatever you want. You, can't, you can't control you it. You can't ask her. You for can it. tell her to skip. I have, oh. I have, she will skip on Amazon, oh. on Apple Music. She who will not be named. Yeah, Siri. Or the other one. <laughs> oh, that one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it depends. I don't know who's doing it. We don't like to say the name out loud. I don't know who's doing it. Because it will respond. Or Siri. Right. Someone Somebody's is, skipping. I have been playing Apple Music and said, skip this song. Can you tell um, the difference between Siri's voice and uh, uh, Echo's voice? Uh, a little bit, but you know, uh, the Echo is faster, for sure. Um, and I think that makes a difference in everything, because it right. just makes it seem like you know, you know, she's obeying us faster. I, I expect we'll see uh, Apple Music on Sonos uh, soon enough. But not probably any more integrated in the Echo. That's the thing. That probably yeah. wouldn't. Yeah. But. Hey, um, coming up in just a little bit, you are going to take a look at a replacement or something that might be the next generation. Slightly different. Of but Google Glass, yeah, but the Viewfind. Mm -hmm. All right. First, I should mention our sponsor, the great folks at Braintree. If you're working on a mobile app and you're looking for a full stack payment solution, look no farther. You found it. Tell the boss, tell your developers, Braintree. It's the payment solution Uber uses, Lyft uses, Airbnb uses, Hotel Tonight uses, Living Social uses. Everybody uses Braintree because Braintree makes your customers happy, makes your developers happy. It's so easy to integrate into your existing app. Braintree gets you ready to receive payments in a jiffy. They've got continuous support, fast payouts. You'll be prepared as your company grows from your first dollar to your billionth dollar. It is amazing. Uh, Braintree supports all the different kinds of payments. PayPal, Apple Pay, yes, Bitcoin, yes, Venmo, credit cards, of course, across all platforms, superior fraud protection, 
customer service. You're going to love it. And I want you to try it right now. And as a little bit of a sweetener, your first $50,000 in transactions will be fee-free. Go to BraintreePayments.com slash NSS. Try the Sandbox. Play with the V.0 SDK. Get ready to take Apple Pay, credit cards, everything with Braintree. BraintreePayments.com slash NSS. And we thank them for their support. Now, let's head on over to the new, uh, to the whatever, they, the Sky Desk. That's where Megan Maroney is about to wear the view finds. Yes, I have always wanted to have glasses. I don't yet. I'm sure I will soon. Uh, but I have Brendan Pierce here with me. He is the vice president of a company called Viewfine, who's done, doing something like Google Glass, but a little bit different. Uh, tell us what the Viewfine is. Well, Viewfine is a wearable display. Uh, as a wearable display, it acts as a second display. So it allows you to watch uh, whatever's on your phone. Whatever's on your phone, it can allow you to watch what, what you're doing in the drone. It allows you to do a lot of things. So you can, like, if your drone is taking footage, you can actually see what it's taking yes. so that, you know, you don't get your footage at home and see that, like, there was a something in front of it or something. Right, right. Yeah, yeah you okay. can see it up there, you can watch, and then you can look at it as you're doing it instead of going back and forth like this. <laughs> so it, it has a magnet. How does it attach to the sure. boxes? Well, it's got magnet attachment that goes on and just clicks on like that. Simple attachment, then you can move it up and down. Okay, so let's see. So do I um, do I have to close one eye in order to see? No, you can have both eyes open. Oh yeah, look at that. And then... So I can read your email if I wanted to. Right, <laughs> or this is our Kickstarter page. <laughs> okay, I, I'll do that instead. <laughs> so does it just hook to iPhones or does it hook to anything? It can hook to anything that has an HDMI output. Oh. So it can hook on to your computers, tablets, to, to cameras, to... Any iOS device, any Android device, it hooks onto anything with uh, HDMI output. So does it have a camera on it so I can secretly videotape you? It does you not have camera, okay. but you can <laughs> use the camera on your phone. Okay. So you can take pictures as normal. And then see what I'm taking. So right. that's the well, that's one of the big differences that with Google Glass. I mean, that's what, it, what disturbed everyone that, you know, it was, I don't want to know, I, I don't know if someone's taking a picture of me, who's videotaping me, so this is... You don't have that with this. Right, right. Yeah, with uh, Google Glass, it's a, Google Glass is a wearable computer. This mm -hmm. is a wearable display, so it's a big difference. The price difference uh, on Kickstarter right now, it's priced at $149. Retail will be $199, whereas the Google Glass was going for $1,500. Right. Yeah, so this is way cheaper, mm -hmm. and it's you know you can use it with uh, Google, an Android device or an iPhone or yes. your drone or basically anything. You don't have to worry about having the right OS. That's right. cool. And, and, you know, it's not prohibited anywhere like Google Glass was, right? I mean, it's because right. right. you can't, you know, you can take it anywhere. Um, so you're in Kickstarter right now. Yes. And then uh, what are the levels that people can... Uh, there's different levels. You can do the um, $5 level where you get a sticker. You can do the $20 level where you get a T-shirt. Do $149 level where you get a few fine. You get the uh, extra pair of glasses oh. on there. Um, and then there's different levels above that where you can get multiple viewfinds. So these fit on sunglasses or people's prescription glasses yep. or whatever. They fit cool. on all sorts of different glasses. Uh, so um, how does it, uh, what, what's the technology behind it? What can you tell us about it that's not? Well, right? it's a 720p uh, display. Uh, just, as I said, HDMI uh, output plugs in and uh, that's pretty much it. Just a very simple technology. There's no software that goes into it. So all you do is plug it in and go. Yeah. And so does it work with just regular cameras too or just phone? It cameras? can work with uh, many different types of regular uh, digital cameras. So could I, would I get in trouble if I use this when I was driving, do you think? Yes. I'm not sure. I think it's, it depends <laughs> on... Because uh, I, <laughs> it depends on... I think it depends on the state laws. Yeah. You know, you, I think I might be distracted, but I don't know. But it would be good to have your navigation ahead of you if you wanted right, to do right. that. And also you can move it up and down, so oh. it's not necessarily right in front of your Oh, eyes. so like if I'm talking, so probably if we were having this conversation, I would have probably done this. Yes, you That can do makes that. more sense. Right, right. <laughs> so I could like watch House of Cards episodes when I was at my desk and Leo would think I was working. Exactly. It's okay. very good usage for that. <laughs> okay. Yes. What are some other uses for it? Uh, different uses. Um, you can be a tourist going through the streets of uh, 
uh, San Francisco and you've got the map in front of you. You can be a mechanic working on your your engine and then you have the the repair manual in front of your face right there so you don't have to keep on looking. It's just right there. You can be a doctor doing possibly surgery or something like and that. And watching House of Cards while you're yeah, doing surgery. And watching surgery. House of Cards, yes. definitely. I think that's a good... Or Frozen, if you want to watch Frozen, <laughs> if you're so inclined. Um, there are many different uses. Uh, as I said, drones. Um, it can be virtual office in some way. So you could have your keyboard and just have your display right here. So um, in some ways, you could be working on your uh, work uh, in private. So right. say you're on the, the bus or airplane. airplane. Yeah, that was one of yeah the things that Google Glass was big on. You know, it would be private, but this would be private with all the, without all the negatives of right. Google Glass. Right. That is really interesting. And so I guess, uh, is there audio, or does the audio still come out? Right now, the audio is just on the phone or whatever your device is. Mm -hmm. And so do they come in different colors, or is this... Right now, we've got white and black. Uh, we did have a special gray version on our Kickstarter page, but we just sold out of that. So now it's just white and black. Well, Brendan, thank you so much. How, no your Kickstarter is not done yet. You're not fully funded yet. So, how, how much longer right. do you have? We've got three more days on Kickstarter, and we're at 181,000. And we've reached our goal. We reached our goal, I think, in the first four days. Oh, you did? Okay. Yes. And so now we're just piling yeah. up. So yeah. That's good to excellent. get more uh, features and benefits on, uh, on our next version. Well, great. Well, I am okay. looking forward to seeing uh, how the seeing this in the wild. I definitely feel like it's much less creepier than. Google Glass, and I do like that you told me that I can put it up like that, and because that's easier to have a conversation like that. Okay. <laughs> thank you so well, much. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Maybe. All right. Maybe. Coming up, we're going to answer your questions in the mailbag, but first we have my old friend Patrick Norton. He's going to do something totally crazy with something that you find in a public restroom. Patrick Norton here from TechThing.com. I make technology programming. Well, just like Leo, except with less hair, which means you can see my forehead, which is shiny because I get greasy because I'm a guy that way. In any case, this tip comes straight from the bathroom. Turns out the best way to degrease your forehead or your nose, if you're feeling a little shiny, ladies, is to run, not walk, to the nearest bathroom and get a toilet seat cover. At least if you're in the state of California. The state of California mandates toilet seat covers for each and every bathroom that's public. And this, whatever this paper is, it sucks up grease like nothing you've ever seen. And it's sounds really awful on a microphone. So I'm going to lean back a little bit. And you may notice, folks, when the paper goes away, I look significantly less shiny. And if I don't, it's because I did it wrong, because this actually works. You heard it here, people. I'm Patrick Norton from Tech Thing, and I hope this tip comes in useful. Ah, it works. It does. I, uh, you know, this isn't just for people who do video shows. Oh, no? Who no, else would this be for? No, it's for everybody because you always need to be Instagram ready. You do. Funniest, funniest graffiti I've ever seen. Uh, it was written on the dispenser for these. It said, free cowboy hats. I <laughs> it's time for the mailbag! That's kind of anticlimactic. Can we, uh... <laughs> maybe be a little explosion or something? Boom! Here's the mailbag, ladies and gentlemen. All right, I tell you what, I will take, uh, you take whichever one you wish. Ooh. There I'll you go. This one. And I shall take this one. Ooh, I got a good one. Oh, you start, let me since start. You have two. This comes from uh, George and Mary, West Melbourne, Florida, watching your shows on a newly acquired Apple TV. Mm -hmm. This brings us to our question. Actually, I have a question. How can you watch our show? Oh, I guess they have a podcast. They have a podcast app. Okay. Previously, we received and recorded your shows on TiVo, which no longer allows watching or recording from the web. Now we have three devices with optical out and only two optical audio inputs on our amplifier receiver. And needless to say, it's a pain manually plugging and unplugging our DVD player to the Apple TV. Is really? Is there? Is George and Mary, you found an interesting use for an Apple TV. Is there an easy and ex inexpensive way to remedy this program? Le love the show. Look forward to it every week. And uh, it and security now keep me sane at work for sure. Now, I'm trying to understand this. They're watching an Apple TV. They have three devices with optical audio out and only two optical. Oh, so they're unplugging the audio. Right, from the back of the TV. Okay, step one, use HDMI. Mm -hmm. because that's got audio and video. HDMI comes out of the back of your Apple TV, and you probably have an HDMI port on your TV. 
Don't even worry about the optical audio. It's exactly the same bits on the HDMI as it is on the optical audio connection. So my suggestion is use HDMI for everything and don't use optical audio for anything. Mm -hmm. If you say, well, but wait, I don't have enough HDMI ports, that's when you start getting fancy with an AV receiver, which will have multiple in and a single out to your television set. And in some cases, those also have multiple optical audio in. So if you do have a reason for optical audio, really that optical audio is only provided if you're using a component or composite, some other connection to your TV that doesn't support audio. HDMI does. You don't need the optical audio. And that's the name of that tool. Yes, what do you thanks got? for finding a way to keep watching us. Yes. Uh, this is from Phil in Pittsburgh. He says, I just completed my bachelor's in computer info systems, and while applying for jobs, I'm seeing lots of employers wanting certs. Yeah. What is your opinion on this, and what is it worth it in the long run is it worth it in the long run to get my CCNA and other? Now, I would say, uh, I don't have any certs, um, but I would say that if you're looking for a job and that you want to have, certs, and they need a certain certification, guess then what? it's absolutely worth it. <laughs> You've got to get um, the cert. Like, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I wouldn't just randomly pay all the money to get, you know, whatever thing right. looks interesting, because they can add up. But if you are looking, and I do recommend that you look at the jobs that you want, to apply for, and if they have a certification, um, it's worth it. I mean, the, the CCNA is what he talks about, and I, I looked that up, I think it's only like $300, $400. Wait a minute, we have a sponsor, IT Pro TV. It's uh, cheap, it's $40 a month, through, uh, you just watch that, and you're gonna have everything you need. The certs are exactly that. They're a way, kind of a standardized way for employers to know what your skills are. Of course, you don't have to have a cert to have those skills. There are lots of great IT people who don't have any certs at all, but what they, it's, I feel like the Wizard of Oz, what they do have is something you don't have, which is experience and the ability to put on their resume, you know, I did this, this, and this, mm -hmm. they can call, did it, was he good at networking? Th then maybe you can get around the cert, but for the most part, when people are hiring, the certs are a shortcut, right. a way of saying, yeah, he's got this skill. Yeah. And 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 if an employer says you have to have the cert, you have to have the cert, right. so it is worth it. But IT, uh, I'm going to throw in a free plug for IT Pro TV. This is a great way to get those certs. If you're if you're good at teaching yourself, you can watch the content, learn it. You might get a book or two. That's a lot less expensive than going to a technical school to get those certs, as you said. How much? Four thousand? Five thousand? No, for a CCNA, I thought it was like. Five hundred dollars, but I might be completely no, no. Wrong. That's to take the test. If you wanted to oh, go to, to school, oh, okay. you're talking thousands and thousands of dollars. If you're smart, a self learner, IT Pro TV, you can watch, you can learn, you can pick. So that beyond stuff. his bachelor's in computer info yeah. systems. Yeah, but the cert is, you know, it's like. Um, it's not, a, it's not a state requirement. It's not like if you want to be a hairdresser, you have to have an esthetician's license. That's right. the different. Right. A cert is just to show you have the knowledge. Yeah. And it's, many employers do require it because it's, frankly, the easiest way for them to do it. Right. Uh, and, and the other thing is don't ask people our age, like, did you need a cert? Because it's a totally different environment now. Right. There are more and more people that want these jobs, and you do right. have to differentiate yourself. So I, but I you, think that... You know, in both cases, you can have the cert and know nothing. You know, you could have studied to the test, know the test, and forgot it all. Yeah. You can not have a cert and know everything. Mm -hmm. N it's, not a, it's not a guarantee, but it is something many employers require, and I think for that reason it's worth getting right. if you're applying for that kind of job. Mm -hmm. uh, here is uh, somebody who called us a follow-up. Sarah mm. uh, did a Help Me uh, on Episode 8. She was trouble using a Gmail for her Internet service provider's email account. She says, you were right after all. I got a hold of the ISP. They said it should work. I tried it again. The key was checking that box that said leave message on server. I hadn't done that before. Lo and behold, it worked. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah, for the update. So mm -hmm. we, It's always nice to know that we didn't steer somebody wrong. Yes, that's true. Megan, it's fun working with you. It's fun working with iOS you, too. iOS today, yeah, every, that's just two days. Uh, every, every Monday. Every Monday, 1230 Pacific. So and you Monday just through have... Friday for Tech News Tonight. Yes. And um, Wednesdays for i5 for I the iPhone. i5 for the iPhone. Yes. And whenever you want to do the screen, new screensavers, we love having you. I here. would love. It's really fun. Good. It's, yeah, it, Good. I, I like it here. It's fast paced. It's moving and helping people. And it gives you reasons to build the Leo bobblehead pianos. Yes, right. I will build something with a banana next time. And a dirndl next time. No. 
That's Lisa's dirndl. I'll <laughs> let her wear it. But thank you for offering again. If you want to be a guest, we'd love to have you. Just email tickets at twit.tv. It's lovely having a live studio audience. Uh, lovely having you watch. We do this show every Saturday afternoon, about 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 2200 UTC. Stop by and say hi. Join us in the chat room. Or, of course, as always, watch On Demand. Anywhere you get podcasts, you'll be able to find the new screensavers. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody!